But that's what's wrong with this generation today. These young boys today, what do she bring to the table? The hell you mean, man? What do your ass bring to the table? You got a woman that can come to the table that can make another you. <laughs> oh, so first of all, I've already I talked about that last statement that women can make another you. First of all, uh, neither men nor women create human beings. That's just taking credit for what God did. But to the extent that we want to put the human element into it as far as creation. Women don't create babies. Uh, men give the DNA for a egg to be fertilized in order for a child to be created. Women carry the child, but men are the actual creative force uh, from a DNA perspective in the creation of life, if we're going to look at it from the human perspective. What else do you need to slide? All right, so we have this video that I put together Sunday night I was ready to go forward with, but I made sure to check today on Monday before moving forward with it. And we now see that uh, Steve and Marjorie have begun to address the rumors against them. And according to Steve, you know, it's being picked up uh, around the around the world here. That there's nothing going on. All is honky dory. It's all just false rumors, right? That's what he's got out here. We got the Los Angeles Times. We got people.com, even down in South Africa and their lifestyle publications, they're talking about it. And they've got the story that Steve uh, says is not true. So then we also have this uh, statement that has been put out by Marjorie. Oh, let's see what uh, publication is this in entertainment. Steve Harvey and wife Marjorie addressed divorce rumors. And she went to her social media. It's like she. Uh, posted a Bible verse, right? This will be that verse. When they hurled their insults at him, and he did not retaliate, when he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Amen. That's a truism there, but that's not exactly uh, a denial. But let's see as she goes on. She then went on to caption the Bible verse saying, My husband and I don't usually stop to address all the foolishness and lies that have been spread about us. However, to whom much is given, much is required. I understand that with my platform, she has a platform. I thought, I thought Steve had a platform, but okay. With my platform comes some sort of responsibility to those that may not be as strong as we are. Marjorie shared a link to material dubbed How to Handle Being Lied About. So according to them, they're being lied about. So unless we get some more... Um, pertinent more particular information we got to go with that right they're saying it didn't go down which is good but i still think from the original video that i recorded there's information uh that we can still learn from there's some lessons in here that we can still uh that we still need to hear about and talk about that's why i played that first piece i'm going to play a little bit more and we're still going to get some of these other lessons in the creation of life if we're going to look at it from the human perspective what else she need to slide up to the table with? What about your job? What happened to men who were supposed to be responsible? Do you know that it's our job to take care of a woman and some children to have a family? That's our damn job. Yeah, brother. And it's also your job to hold the woman who you are going to bring into your life to a standard and to lead her by first it, uh, engaging with her from the get-go based on masculine standards and based on you leading the way by uh, representing the way that you need to represent, but demanding that she also represent on her end, on the feminine end, and be a woman of a certain standard that makes her eligible to be in your realm and not just bring anybody in on, well, she exists, She's a female. She opened her eyes today, so she deserves the world from me, and she's not required to come with anything else to the table. Nothing at all. Not even any morals, not loyalty. She's not required to come with anything. And based on this, it's my hypothesis that it's my hypothesis that men who set no standard with their women, their women invite that woman to uh, engage in a very selfish and self-directed self-driven lifestyle within their relationship that allows her to 
center everything around herself, her feelings, what she wants, and then she is in position to demand how you move as a man and tell you to move here, to move there, and to justify to herself whatever she wants to do. So she wants to talk to you crazy. She wants to humiliate you. If her feelings say that you are not giving her enough attention, she then has the right to go and get with another man who will give her attention and that excuse that women always use to go and cheat when they're just doing the same thing that any man is doing. They're going and doing what they want to make themselves feel however they want to feel. And there's no more excuse for them than there is uh, for when a man does it. But that this kind of uh, projection to a woman to let her know that she's not required to have any standard, not to live to any standard, then gives her that permission to behave any kind of way in a relationship. And men who set things up this way set themselves up in folly. I'm Yobachi 2007 back at you with another one. Please take a moment to like this video up. If you hit the like, that will really help me out here, and I appreciate it. And with that, we're going to get right back to the main video. So my overall position and the thesis of this video is that a man should not be bringing a woman into his life and into his realm unless she's a woman of honor. right? So this notion that a woman brings nothing to the table is absurd and you are inviting a world of pain if that's the mind frame you operate from in dealing with women and with that we're going to get back into more of the pre-recorded video that i was going to use previously because we still have some lessons here the line that you just saw here this isn't him talking about them breaking up uh to over this current row he's talking about when they were originally dating back in the 80s or late 90s let's read it i mean early 90s late 80s Let's see exactly what the time period was. We're going to read this. Comedian Steve Harvey recalls when he told his current wife, Marjorie, that he'd married her after they met for the first time. But Harvey also admitted that they broke up after he became homeless in the late 80s. All right. The Family Feud hosts reunited, uh, recounted his love story on the Carol Rogers Show, which is published on uh, July 7, 2021. Okay. I met her in the late 80s. We dated for a year and a half. I was in Memphis, Tennessee. She came into the comedy club late. She came to the front row. And when I saw her, I couldn't believe it, man. The audience started giggling because I just staring. I was just staring at her. Case in point, Will Smith. Nobody fanboys his wife more. And as the saying goes, you treat her like a you treat her like a superstar, she's gonna treat you like a fan. And in response, to this um, putting his wife on display above him as a superstar while he uh, acts like the cabana boy. Her response to that is she slept with their son's friend. <laughs> She's so mentally turned off and sexually turned off in him. She, prefer she preferred her, her son's friend and uh, made sure the world knew about that. And then also made sure the world knew that she felt like Will couldn't do her right. And then she's so uh, upfront and open about this that her teenage daughter, his daughter, wrote a letter to Tupac, even though she wasn't even born till years after Tupac was dead, doesn't even know the man, but what, wrote and published a letter to Tupac asking him to come back to make her mom happy because apparently her dad couldn't. That's the implication because her dad can't. That's what this kind of pedestalizing uh, for your pedestalizing your woman and simping does to her sexual desire for you. It makes her go sleep with your son's friend. A woman should have more awe for you. How can you lead someone who you are in awe of and is not in awe of you? So you're putting yourself in the subordinate position when you, uh, you're just so enthralled with the person and you're already telling her you're going to marry her the first day you meet her because of her looks. So you're driven strictly by the physical and the determination of a woman being brought to your life, is particularly and especially to the point of marriage, cannot be simply based on she looks good. That is absurd. That is not a basis. That goes back to the beginning video and what we talked about there. Come to the table that can make another you. What else she need to slide up to the table with? 
some morals? How about some values? Oh, maybe loyalty, uh, respect for you as a man, respect not to humiliate you to the world and and roll around with your with your uh, bodyguard. But this is not surprising that you would do this for. On All right, forwarding in the video just because I started to talk more about there about uh, Marjorie supposedly having uh, had an affair, but since she, they're saying that she didn't, we're going to move forward in this discussion. So that's when Harvey made his declaration to her on the spot that she was going to be his wife. First day he meets her, just because she looks good. <laughs> I said, I don't know how who you are, but I'm going to marry you one day, he proclaimed. Oh, isn't that sweet romantic? Isn't he a good romantic little puppy? But the magic carpet ride quickly crashed and burned. Okay, he went broke. He was homeless. If you know Steve's story, you already knew that. So this is when he went homeless. So um, so he says, it says, Harvey remained in, de remained in debt to his bodyguard, who was instrumental in helping Harvey and his wife get back together after Harvey divorced his ex-wife. So he got married after he stopped being homeless, got back his, his career on track and became a big time comedian. He got married to his first wife when he was on the rise. So after he got divorced, he was in Las Vegas gambling. As it says here, his bodyguard quickly arranged a call between Harvey and Marjorie. because He found out she was divorced. He went and got her. And I couldn't believe it. Harvey said it was the day after I got divorced the day after. So he owes, um, he owes his bodyguard is saying, right. So William Friedman, popularly known as Big Boom, is Steve Harvey's bodyguard, comedian and host. It doesn't say the, what bar, the bodyguard's name is, but this guy has been his uh, longtime bodyguard. So this must be who they're talking about, which is this picture. I think some of this is photoshopped. These heads look photoshopped, but this is the guy. He's a real big guy. Uh, so they call him Big Boom. This headline is fake. Um, clickbait headline, but that's the real dude right there. <laughs> and so uh, that's who, that's Charlie Wilson. So that's who she's getting it on with. Because And now we have to say that that's who she's purportedly getting it on with because Steve didn't require her to bring anything to the table. That's a real picture there, we understand. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, hey, hopefully uh, it isn't true as they're saying. But I think, again, we can learn some lessons to make sure that you're not getting yourself hemmed up in a situation over a skirt just looking good. That's that's not enough, fellas. That's not the basis for why you bring someone into your life. You got to have standards for who you bring into your home, who you allow to be in your life. And that's what we just got to stand on, regardless of uh, the accuracy of the cheating allegations in this particular instance. Don't be making decisions just based on the feeling you're getting in your pants. That's not it, bro. Like this video up, please. Subscribe. Hit the bell to come back for more. And we'll get into it again on the next one. Yobachi 2007. I'm out.